He says, for your spiritual uh, progression, I'm going to stay. But only this, uses a Greek word, manon, which just means out of all the stuff you could do, don't fail in this point. Only let the manner of your life be worthy of the gospel. Uses a word that means to live as a citizen. It says, yo, only this, continue to live like you're a citizen of a place where the gospel is the culture and the climate. He even goes on earlier to say, yo, I'm in jail, but that's okay. The gospel is advanced because of it. What he's saying is the gospel has priority in my life. The gospel has priority in the church. It even trumps my conditions. Ah, yeah, the gospel has me in jail, but I don't deviate from the gospel. I maintain in the gospel because the gospel even takes priority over me. In the church, he says, I, I, I would go through the formalities of thank you. And he says, but the gospel takes priority. He did this in Galatians where things were so bad. He says, let me just go straight to it. Who bewitched you? Who got you off the gospel path? The gospel, priority in the church. So we guard it against false teachers. You see him say remain at Ephesus, which means that maybe Timothy had his bags packed. Maybe Timothy was hoping that the assignment at Ephesus was over. He, like Paul, would go from place to place. He, like Paul, would set up shop, do a work, and then move on. Maybe he was ready to go. Maybe he saw himself like, I can't wait to get to the next location. Paul says, when I was going to Macedonia, I told you stay, and I'm writing to urge you. Stay in Ephesus and command the false teachers who are taking people off the gospel path. Remain. You don't only see it as a priority, you see it as the problem it is. For some people, false teaching or different teaching is not all that bad. It's not all that problematic. But we know from chapter 6 of this same book, 1 Timothy, that it's not just different teaching, but it's false teaching. He's going to say this teaching does not line up with what Jesus has said He's going to say that this teaching does not produce godly living. This teaching does not. So he says, this is not just different. This is false. False teaching, he says, it's, it's, it's unpredictable. You never know where false teaching is going to pop up from in the church. It's a problem because you, you don't know who it's going to come through. You ever see those movies where whatever's wrong is just jumping from person to person and in one scene, somebody's helping. It's usually those zombie movies. And somebody's like, hey, come over here. I see a door. And by the time you get to the door, they're trying to choke you. Well, he's like, you never, you, it's unpredictable. You never know who the false teacher is because in Acts chapter 20, he said, I'm going to warn you from among your very selves, false teachers will rise up, which means it's the, the person you were at Starbucks with. <laughs> it can't be coming from Joey. Joey and I went and sat down and went through faithful preaching by Dr. Marita. How is it that he's off base? But this is why false teaching is a problem. Paul says, don't play with it. Because you never know where it's going to pop up from. My teacher used to say, my seminary professor used to say, heresy always starts in the pulpit. You don't know where it's going to come from, who it's going to come from. But it always starts from the pulpit. We don't listen to average Joes. You never hear anybody come to the elders or something. My friend who just got saved told me that the Trinity is not true. Usually it's somebody who will come from the pulpit and make you think differently about your faith that'll make, or somebody else's pulpit that'll make you say, I'm not sure about that anymore. It's a problem. It says, deal with it as such. Don't take it lightly. He uses a term here. He says that you may charge or, you're, or command certain persons. It's a military term. He says, yo, this is, this is a term of force. Deal forcefully with false teachers when they falsely teach. Deal force, forcefully with bad theology. He says, and warn the certain persons. They cluster, they build, they form cliques, and they influence the church False teachers don't look like false teachers. They look like respectable people who have a viewpoint. I mean, you got to give it to them. The Bible supports this. 1 John 2.19 says they went out from us, but only because they were not of us. But we didn't know that. When they were with us, we thought they were us. But when they went out from us, we realized, John says, they were not of us. 
2 Corinthians eleven thirteen 13 to 5 says that there's something called uh, the false apostles who were deceitful workmen. Now, they're working. They're not kicking their feet up, just chilling. They're not passive in the spiritual formation process. He says they're deceitful workmen. So these are the hustlers in the faith disguising themselves as apostles. They probably dress well. They probably stepped up and they speak well. He says, and no wonder for Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it's no surprise if his servants disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Satan never puts on his red jumpsuit and his pitchfork, files his nails and lets his teeth show. (laughs) His grills, I got to put on my diamond crusted fangs. (laughs) And then try to come and get you to believe something false. He dresses up as an apostle and then turns a light on. And so you and I can't believe it. He says, this is why you can't mess with false teaching when you identify it as such, because it looks impressive to the person who's not discerning and doesn't know the truth. 